Hey there, this is Simon from Daslight and welcome to another very exciting tutorial on MIDI control. So today what we're going to be doing is connecting a MIDI controller, this is an Akai APC Mini, and we're going to be controlling scenes and faders inside the Daslight software. Now there are many, many MIDI controllers on the market. Uh, there are MIDI controllers with motorized faders such as the Behringer BCF and the Alation MIDICon Pro. Uh, this controller here has some neat buttons which light up and also some faders along the bottom. It's a really good value for money controller. So let's get started. What I've got here is a show with a couple of scenes. I've got a red scene which turns a couple of RGB lights red and then I've got a green scene which makes the lights green. So what we're going to be doing first is triggering these scenes from the MIDI controller and what we have to do is make sure the MIDI controller is connected and set up correctly and to do that we go into the Daslight preferences so if we go up here to preferences and then if we go down to MIDI we can see the MIDI controllers listed here now we've got an APC Mini and this is a MIDI input device. So what this means is the MIDI messages are going to be sent from the APC Mini and received by Daslight. Then we've also got an output device. So what this means is Daslight will send the MIDI message to the APC Mini to control the buttons and make sure the buttons light up at the right time. If we had a MIDI controller with motor faders, Daslight can also control the motor faders as well. So we'll just click OK. So what we're going to do first is we're going to trigger the red scene with this button up here. So if I click the red scene and then go over here. And this is the edit MIDI mapping button. And this is going to open the MIDI triggering dialog and all I have to do is press the corresponding MIDI button like so. The information is learnt automatically and then I just need to click OK. And when I press the button, the scene will come on. When I press it again, the scene will go off. If I click the scene with the mouse, notice that the LED on the MIDI controller goes on and goes back off again. Now you may have noticed that as I'm pressing this button, it's not actually lighting up on the MIDI controller and I'll show you why. If we go back to the MIDI triggering window what we have to do is we have to enable this option. It's called feedback when data received. Now the way Daslight normally works is if you click a button with the mouse it will send the message to the MIDI controller. If you also have a keyboard shortcut or something like this it will also send the MIDI message to the MIDI controller but it doesn't send the MIDI message if the scene is triggered via a MIDI message. And the reason for that is some controllers actually control the lights by themselves and by sending the same value back you can end up with an infinite MIDI loop. So for example on a Behringer BCF when you press the button the BCF lights up the button and then sends the message to Daslight and then in some modes if it receives the message from Daslight it will then resend the message to Daslight and you end up with this infinite MIDI loop which can cause the software to crash. So just be careful when selecting this button but if you've got something like an Akai APC that's fine. We can click feedback when data received. We can click OK and then when I press this it lights up. When I press it again it's released. Now there's one other option which is also really important and this is enable note off and velocity or value zero. Now what's happening at the moment is I'm pressing the button from the Akai and it's sending a note on message. Then I'm releasing the button and it's sending a note off message. Now if this is enabled I press the button, the scene comes on, it sends a note on message I release the button, it sends a note off message and the scene's released. Therefore the scene is working like a flash scene and normally that's not what we want. Therefore if I click this, if I click here, we need to disable this option. That way the software will ignore all note off messages.
Another great option, if I go back into here, is to actually change the MIDI output message. So right now it's sending a value of 127 and that makes this button green. Now this is a red scene. To make the button red, I can change the output value to 3. I can hit OK and now it's going to light up red. Then I can go to the green scene, map MIDI, press the second button, hit OK and this one's going to light up green. So that's basically how you can map to a scene. There's also another way of mapping to a scene and this is via the Live tab. If I click Live, you can right click a scene like so, go to Shortcuts and go to Edit MIDI Mapping. And this will basically bring up exactly the same window that we saw before. So it's a nice quick way if you need to map a lot of scenes at once whilst in live mode. It's not only scenes you can map MIDI to, so you can also map MIDI to these faders down here. So for example, if we just go back to the Editor tab, I'm going to go onto the General tab so we can see all six faders here. So imagine we want to map this fader here to control this fader here. All we have to do is right click it, go to Edit MIDI Mapping, Move the fader and hit OK. And now this fader is controlling the first channel. There are also a few other options in this window. So if I just go back, right click, edit MIDI mapping. There's some interesting options down below here. Oh, by the way, this is the feedback when data received. So if you've got any motor faders, on your MIDI controller you want enable feedback and you want to make sure that this feedback when data, to, data received is disabled otherwise as you're moving the fader on your MIDI controller Dazlite's going to be sending a value back and the fader is going to end up fighting with itself so if you do have something like a MIDI Con Pro or BCF make sure this first one's enabled and this second one's disabled now going to this output section, this allows us to map one fader to several faders very quickly. So for example, imagine I wanted to control the red fader of the first fixture and the second fixture. So this would be DMX channel 1 and DMX channel 4. What we can do is we can write 1 plus 4 and we can click OK. And now when I move this fader, you see channel 1 and channel 4 is being controlled. You can also map a range of faders. So imagine I wanted to control the first four channels with this fader here. So I can right click, edit MIDI mapping, and I can put 1.4. And this is going to map faders 1, 2, 3 and 4. So if I click OK, now you see all four faders are being controlled by this single MIDI fader. There are also some other interesting options. So if we go back, there's this minimum value and maximum value. So at the moment the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 127. Now remember MIDI faders go from 0 to 127, unlike DMX faders which go from 0 to 255. So for example, if I set the maximum to 64 on channel 1, what this is going to do is, when the MIDI value is at 0, this fader is at 0, when the MIDI value is at 64, which is halfway for MIDI fader, this has actually reached the maximum, 255. So it's basically just using half the range of the MIDI fader, like so. And you can also do the same with a minimum. So if I go back to Edit MIDI Mapping, let's set a minimum value of, uh, let's say, 32. So now the full range of the red channel is going to be controlled between 32 and 64. 
So this is an interesting way to be able to kind of scale the input with the fader inside Dazzlight. So it's not just scenes and faders that can be mapped in Dazzlight. You can actually control parts of the software with a MIDI input controller as well. So if we just jump back over to the live screen here, let's trigger the red scene. What we can actually do is we can control other elements of the software, such as the master dimmer. So if I right click the master dimmer, edit MIDI mapping. If I move this master dimmer here, it's now going to control the master dimmer here with this fader on the controller. This also applies to buttons throughout the software as well. So for example, uh, this is the, uh, the reset all button. Uh, for those of you who don't know, just a reminder of what this does, this basically resets any edits you've done down here and reverts back to the original scene. So for example, imagine I move this first fader. So all these faders are now in manual control mode. If I press this reset button, it jumps back to the original value in the scene, which is red. And we can map this button to a button on our MIDI controller. So let's say uh, this button here. So all we have to do is right click this reset button, edit MIDI mapping. Then we can click here. And when we tap this button, everything resets. Imagine we've got the green scene playing, we've made some edits like so, we want to just reset, tap here, everything resets. There are a load of other options as well, so for example uh, scene dimmer. So if I expand the scene here, we've got the scene dimmer and the scene speed. I can right click the scene dimmer fader, edit MIDI mapping. Let's control the scene dimmer with this. As you see, this is now controlling the brightness of the green scene. We've even got these uh, group buttons mapped now. So anyone who's using a version of uh, the software after December 2016 can now control these buttons with MIDI. So if I right click the group next button, edit MIDI mapping. Let's tap this button on the controller. And as you see, this is almost being used as a go button now by jumping to the next scene within the group. And there are a load of other options. Uh, to see all options, just go over to the software preferences, open MIDI, sorry, shortcuts, and this lists all the shortcuts within the software. And you see this MIDI column here allows you to view the MIDI message for a particular item. So this is the software blackout. And you see some of the text is in black and some of the text is in white. The text that's in white is the command that's already been assigned. So for example, the reset all has already been assigned. So this is in white. So we can see that uh, note number 98 is mapped to the reset button. And if we scroll down here, you see the uh, red scene and the green scene has been mapped. The next button has been mapped. But as you see, there's loads of really interesting options here. So for example, BPM tap. This is great if you want to synchronize music to the beat of the music with a tap button. You could perhaps have this button in the top right here. So you can tap the beat of the music and any linked scenes will then synchronize to that BPM. And as you've probably seen, it's not just MIDI that you can map to all these things. It's DMX as well. DMX pretty, pretty much works in the same way as MIDI. So what you have to do with the DMX, you go to Devices here. I've got a DVC4GZM selected. It's got three ports. And here I've set port number three as a DMX input. And then you can map that to up to 255 different input numbers. So let's select input one, hit OK. And then just like before, when we right click an item, instead of clicking edit MIDI mapping, we can click edit DMX mapping. And I've not actually got a DMX controller connected right now, but you can click DMX in mapping, select your input number, which corresponds to the input number inside the software preferences. 
So input one, and then we can map a minimum and a maximum value. And then we still have all these options down here to map a single fader to multiple faders and all that kind of stuff. So if you've got any questions on the MIDI or the DMX mapping, feel free to drop us a message on the forums or drop us an email or drop us a message on Facebook. And that concludes the MIDI topic. Uh, next time we're going to be moving on to talk about some audio triggering.